Hey everybody, I'm Rob Freeman and welcome back to Securing the Built Environment. This is episode 150 and in this episode we're going to be talking about Apple's Advanced Data Protection Service. And uh, we're going to talk about three things in this video. Uh, number one is what is Apple's Advanced Data Protection Service? Number two, what are the pros and cons of using it? And number three, how do you turn it on? So if you find something uh, if you enjoyed this video, if you find something useful about it, uh, please hit the like button here and you can subscribe to my YouTube channel as well. So uh, yeah, so what is advanced data protection? Well, Apple offers end-to-end -end encryption for 14 core services for anybody who uses iCloud. And advanced data protection essentially expands that end-to-end -end encryption for 10 additional services. So it makes it harder for um, anyone who is trying to get access to your data, either a hacker or a business or a government, to gain access to your data. Because if, say, there was a data breach or a hack, and Apple's servers were compromised, your data is end-to-end -end encrypted within Apple, within its iCloud service for all these services. That means that Apple doesn't have the encryption keys and they can't provide uh, the data about you and about your activity uh, to anyone or that data can't be found or can't be made sense of because it's just going to be encrypted. It's going to be a bunch of uh, meaningless numbers and symbols. Um, and so that's what Apple's Advanced Data Protection Service is. And we're going to go through um, really the pros and cons of using it. But you may have heard of this Advanced Data Protection Service in the in recently in the news because it's been uh, in the public uh recently because of some high profile news stories. Uh, the story was broken by the Washington Post. Basically, uh, it was a story that said that the UK government was uh, requiring Apple to provide a backdoor to their servers. Basically, they were trying to essentially kill end-to-end -end encryption. And the way they did this was through a very Orwellian law called the Investigatory Powers Act, which has apparently been on the books since 2016. And it is a very, um, it's a very uh, s sinister law, the way that it's written, because Apple was not, um, not able to disclose that it had received a request to provide this backdoor. Uh, if they were to disclose that, they would have been in breach of the law. And um, the law also had broader implications for people, not just in the UK, but it essentially made end-to-end -end encryption uh, illegal for anyone all over the world, anyone using Apple services. And so really, this law just really doesn't make any sense. It, it seems uh, crazy that Apple would comply with it. And so they didn't. And they turned off this advanced data protection service in the UK uh, recently, I think last week. And um, so if you're in the UK, unfortunately, you can't use this service if you wanted to turn it on. But for those of us who are not in the UK, uh, let's talk about how you can you know, you have the pros and cons of using advanced data protection, what it is and how to turn it on if you want to do that. So um, basically what advanced data protection does is, like I mentioned, there's Apple provides by default uh, end to end encryption for a bunch of different services. There are 14 services that are your passwords and keychain, your health data, your journal data, your home data, payment information, Apple Card transactions, Apple Maps data, quick type keyboard data, Safari, history, tab groups, and iCloud tabs, screen time, Siri information, Wi-Fi passwords, Bluetooth keys, and Memoji. And then um, Apple also encrypts your uh, iMessages. However, you got to be careful in the sense that uh, iMessage is end encrypted if you don't have ba iCloud backups en enabled. However, if you do have your iCloud backups enabled, Apple keeps a copy of your encryption key backed up, um, but the key is not encrypted. So that is to help you if you have to recover your data um, for some reason. And um, and then also, 
there are certain iCloud services that are always going to have what they call standard data protection, which is the services called uh, iCloud Mail, uh, Contacts, Calendars, iWork Collaboration Features, and Shared Albums in Your Photos. But if you turn on uh, Advanced Data Protection, you will get an additional 10 services that will be end-to-end encrypted. And those include your iCloud backups, so on your device and your messages, uh, your iCloud drive, your photos, your notes, reminders, Safari bookmarks, Siri shortcuts, voice memos, wallet passes, and freeform data. And if you turn on ADP, uh, you will also get end-to-end encryption uh, as well as encryption of your backup key uh, for your iCloud iMessages. And um, it's one thing to note is that um, right now when you use iCloud, you do have access to iCloud.com uh, because you know you can use iCloud.com to gain access to your iCloud data from anywhere, even if you don't have one of your devices. So if you don't have your iPhone with you, but you want to check your email or you want to check your messages or go on use Find My or something like that, you can use iCloud.com. But once you have Advanced Data Protection Service turned on, you can't access that anymore. And they just they they do that so that only your trusted devices are able to access your data. And um, so there's a couple, you know, pros and cons to using advanced data protection. The pros are obviously you have more control over your data and how it's encrypted. So there's 24 services that are end-to-end encrypted as opposed to just 14. And, um, you know, not even Apple can access your data, even in the event of a, of a data breach or a request from a law enforcement agency or a government and Apple just doesn't have access to your data because it's encrypted and you have the keys. So if you consider yourself like a high risk person, you have, you know, maybe you're, you feel like you are a target for some, for hackers or, uh, you know, foreign governments seeking to get access to your data, uh, then you may want to turn on advanced data protection. Uh, now, the cons of using advanced data protection are that, you know, essentially your data recovery is 100% on you. And um, Apple can't help you recover your data if you lose your one of your trusted devices or you lose, you know, the devices where you have this information because you're obviously not going to be able to get it on iCloud.com anymore. Uh, so you really have to be um, thoughtful about how you're managing all this data and um, you know, there's a the potential for permanent data loss if you are not managing these these items. And, and the items that you need to manage uh, to recover your data uh, are there's three things. One is your recovery key, which is a 28 character code, which you just you generate on your phone or your computer, and you can print it out and s- store it in a safe place. Um, your recovery contacts, uh, which can be a friend or a relative who can help you by providing a, a recovery code in the event that you need to recover your data. They don't have access to your data, but they can help you recover it. And then the passcode or the password on your Apple device. Like if you're using an iPhone, you're going to use a passcode. And if you have a password on one of your Macs, that would be the other item that you would need. So, um, the requirements, if you want to turn on advanced data protection, the requirements to turn it on are to, you have to have uh, two-factor authentication enabled, you have to have a passcode for your device, and you need to have at least one of the recovery contacts or a recovery key. You can also have both. And, um, you know, having both is probably, you know, safer than having um, only one uh, because, you know, if you have a contact and you have a recovery key and you lose your key, um, then at least you have your contact. Uh, And you also have to have all your devices running the latest software on your iCloud account. So uh, to turn it on, Essentially, you go to your, and we're just talking about on an iPhone, you tap settings, and then you tap on your name or your profile at the top of the screen under your settings, tap iCloud, and then tap turn on advanced data protection at the bottom of that screen. 
and then you will be prompted through a series of screens where you'll be asked to, um, you know, the first they're going to give you a little warning that says that you're responsible for your data recovery. Apple's not going to have this information, so you have to approve that. And then you're going to go through and re review your recovery methods. And those recovery methods are, like I said, your contacts, your recovery contacts, and a recovery key or a recovery key. Uh, and then you'll they'll also be asked to verify your passcode. And um, once that's done, you just hit turn on advanced data protection and you'll have that turned on. So, um, you know, at the end of the day, who should turn this on? It really depends on how comfortable you are managing these recovery items and um, how, you know, at risk you think you are to have your data um, hacked or, you know, how at risk you are in terms of having your data um, uh, be the, the target of, of some, you know, third party that, that you don't want to have that data. And um, so it's really a personal choice at the end of the day, but um, I wanted to, you know, go through these items because uh, advanced data protection has been in the news lately and people have been really kind of thinking, you know, do I need this? Do I not need this? Um, and, you know, Apple's security services are uh, pretty good in terms of, you know, its its core services. And if you don't consider yourself to be at risk, you know, maybe you're going to choose to not have advanced data protection turned on and just feel comfortable that you have uh, Apple there in the event that you need to recover your data in case something happens. Uh, but if you feel comfortable about managing a recovery key and having recovery contacts and having your uh, your device passcode or your pass uh, passwords stored safely and you feel comfortable managing all that, then then you may by all means just want to turn that on. A lot of you know a lot of cybersecurity experts say that they think that it should be turned on, and then others think that um, it doesn't. It's not they, they they don't turn it on. So it's there's not a lot of consensus. It really is a individual choice. Uh, but yeah, that's it. Um, if you have any questions about this, feel free to comment below the video. Thanks again for watching. I hope you found it useful and have a great day.